round three of my playthrough of Perils in the Lost Coast, Perils of the Lost Coast, and it's Harsk's turn. Where He's in the woods, she's at the wooden bridge. The only location that's been closed is the farmhouse. And she's cast a couple of healing spells. She, t she took a healing potion and she cast a healing spell. So we're kind of like down a, 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 a turn, a timer card, but we're up a bunch of health. I am feeling like these guys are a little bit underpowered, to be honest. But it's it's kind of my own fault. I've mixed in some cards that are out of the set. So it's a little bit more difficult than it probably should be. And we'll see what happens. So I've ticked over a timer card. It's Harsk's round turn. He encounters a weapon. Well, he happens to have an ally who can help him get this weapon. It's a crow who can get recharged to add a d6 to get a weapon. I honestly think this is worth it because this is a this is a magical weapon. It's melee, so that's not exactly Harsk's uh, you know, best trait, but it's not bad, and it is a d6 plus one, so it's a magical, it's, it's got some magic to it. So, what is this? To get to get this, it's a strength melee. Harsk's strength die is a d6, so by recharging his crow ally, he gets two d6. Let's try it. So he's, he needs a nine on two d6. That's a one. So it's impossible for him to get a 9, uh, and therefore he loses this weapon. If any d6 rolled for this is a 1, count it as a 3, then discard this card. If any d6 rolled for this we oh, if you have the weapon, yeah, okay. Oh, it's too bad. It's a nice, nice little weapon. But no. Um, okay, so let's see. That's his turn, I guess, right? Because I'm not gonna... I mean, I could, I could... I could just discard again. Yeah, I guess it makes sense to discard more often because she can give up one turn to resurrect, essentially, possibly many more. So he's discarding a blessing for the right to explore again. Skeleton Horde. Each character at an open location summons and encounters an ancient skeleton henchman banish this card okay so i need to find an ancient skeleton henchman wait i've, I've encountered these several times now and i i keep thinking yeah they're not they're not that bad i mean i say that now but i mean it's it's an eight eight to defeat so we got a light crossbow here, which is going to be essentially 2d8, and then of course he's got that plus 3 bonus for his ranged attack skill. Uh, yeah, so he's rolling a 5 across 2d8. 1, and 4, 5. Wow, he just makes it. So his ancient skeleton is vanquished. Let's see how Kira does. Well, I'm assuming an ancient skeleton is an undead... Oops undead it is of course so that means that she's got a special ability and that is add a d d8 with the magic trait to your check to defeat a bane with the undead trait so that means that she gets to use her strength melee which is a d6 plus two strength melee plus six no strength melee which is a two she gets to add a d6, and her strength and melee is a d6, right? d6, yeah. So she's going to do uh, 2d6 to get a um, to get a 7. 4. 5. So that's 9, 10, 11... She beat her ancient skeleton. Perfect. That's good. I mean, that's not the... I would have rather just not encountered skeletons, but all told, that was that was okay. No one took damage. I mean, that was an exploration turn, and we didn't find a whole lot, but, you know, we have to get through through this deck to, to either find the villain or the henchman, um, or... Or, or just close the location. So he's back up to five. 
That's his turn. We'll take over a timer card. It is now Kira's turn. She's got she's down one card because she just used one to do her um what what did she use one for? Actually, now that I'm thinking about it. I don't remember. Well she's down one anyway. Um so it's her turn to explore. And she finds a guide. This could be good. Um, she can use dip uh, Charisma or Diplomacy or Wisdom Survival. Well, she can't use Survival, but she could use Wisdom. That's her Magic D12. Five. Does not equal a seven, unfortunately. So she does not get an ally. Is that correct? Or is there some special thing? No. Nothing at the wood... What's, what's the wooden bridge local rule? At this location, you may discard two to evade. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I guess nothing for the ally. Is nothing. No, no dice for the ally. Okay. So I could, once again, I could, like, use a blessing to explore again. How am I doing on the timer cards? Our timer deck. I guess it's okay. I don't know. I feel I feel like I'm behind. So, and I, I I'm aware that I'm gonna have to waste another turn eventually to boost Harsk back up or to boost her back up. Eh, do it anyway. <laughs> Actually, why not? Uh. Black Cloth Armor. This is from Shackle and Skulls. Constitution Fortitude. This would have been perfect for Harsk. I guess it's cool, but it's not It's not nece necessary. So she does have a Fortitude Constitution. And is this Fortitude or just Constitution? Yeah, Constitution Fortitude. So she has a plus three. I didn't realize that. She has a plus three and then a d6 for that, for that roll. Um, meaning that she needs to get a 3 on a d6. That feels attainable. That's 5. Oh, she's got the armor. That's so cool. So, once again, yes, I'm cheating. This is not from this set. This is a skull and shackle um, item. But, I mean, look at it. It's just so cool. And I have the card. I'd like to play with it. So... If you are the only character at your location, you may reveal this card to add one to your combat check. Well, that's good. Banish the card to reduce all damage dealt to you to zero. If you are proficient with light armor, bury this card instead. She is proficient with light armor, so she will never have to lose this card permanently. If you are proficient with light armor, you may recharge this card when you reset your hand. Recharge when you reset. I don't know what reset means. Does that mean when you draw back up to five? I don't know. Well, whatever. She's got a really cool item. Um, that's super cool. I'm very happy about that. This is exactly why I'm putting sc shackle and skull cards in there, because there are just some cool cool cards, really. And now it's Harsk's turn. I forgot, at the end of his turn, he's allowed to look, he's allowed to peek, scry, he's allowed to look at what's next. I forgot about that. Okay. Tick over a timer card, and then uh, I saw that it was a monster, because he looked, and it is a monster. It's an eight. If undefeated, shuffle the gecko back into a random open location. Oh, that's interesting. That's fun. Okay, so this is an 8. I feel like there's no reason to to do anything, really, but a crossbow. So that's his D8 plus his D8 plus his plus 3. So he's got to get a 5 on 2 D8. 2, 4. So that's a 6, 9... Defeats an 8. The giant gecko is defeated. He has no blessings to discard for, like, free turns or anything like that. So that was the end of his turn. 
At the end of his turn, he's allowed to look at the next card, because he's a ranger. That's what he does. We have found the villain. That's the villain. That's Jubral Visky. We've heard his name in town. We've heard that he's the leader of the brigands that have been attacking Sandpoint and probably raiding homesteads and attacking caravans. Before the encounter, exchange two cards of your choice. Recharge two cards of your choice from your hand. Okay. And he's a 10. All right. So we just need to be smart about this. because we. So now we know where the villain is. We know that Harsk, ha, his, best, his best ability, like his best hope is, like the best he can possibly do right now is a D8, D8, and a plus three. So if our if our AC the AC that we're up against is 10 minus 3 for his little bonus 7 so a 7 across 2d8 not impossible What's Kira got? She's got this thing that adds 1 to her combat check. And her combat check would be a d6 plus 2. So she would essentially have 1d6 to try to get 7. Less good, that one. So Harsk might be our best hope. The thing is that once we reveal this card, then he, the villain is going to flee to another location. So I think it only makes sense for Harsk to leave the woods knowing that the villain is is there and then we don't have to we we can close the other locations and we'll have cornered the villain so that one little ability from from harsk has seriously altered the game honestly i mean that's that's a really huge benefit uh it's changed my entire strategy so the villain is in the woods. We know that now. I mean, that's huge, 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 huge. So that was the end of Harsk's turn, right? Yeah. So next up is Kira. I'll put her her here. Harsk is, of course, going to have to travel to her now. Um, or maybe, maybe I'll have him travel to the waterfront. Yeah. Because once again, like, he's more powerful when he's not with her. Because he's got that ranged bonus that he can provide. So the villain is in the woods. We need to close these two locations and then go after the villain. That's the strategy. That's what we'll do starting next time. Thanks for watching.